I'm Ben Bankowitz. Welcome to TCM. Every Saturday and Sunday night in November, we'll be taking a look at movies which help to shape the culture. And we begin tonight with a couple of good ones, movies that undoubtedly made an impact. Joining me is a frequent guest at TCM and a good friend of mine, historian, uh, writer, uh, film essayist. I made that term up right here on the spot. Donald Vogel. <laughs> Donald, how are you? I'm fine, Ben. Good to see you. Donald, our first film tonight is from 1932. I'm a fugitive from a chain gang. No question, this movie had a significant cultural impact. Yes? Tremendous impact. You know, some of the films that are being shown in this series, and, and Fugitive is definitely one of them, introduced audiences to a world that the audience um, didn't know anything about and was totally uh, unexpecting of seeing. And Fugitive does that, and I think it really altered the consciousness of the audience after people left the film. And my feeling about it in terms of the impact that it had at the time it was released was that same year 32, earlier in April of 32, Muni had starred in Scarface. Here he played this gangster who was ruthless, who was cutthroat, who was a real threat to American society. And I think when audiences heard about this film that came out in November of 32, that Muni was in it, I think they were expecting to see another gangster film, uh, especially since Fugitive is in the title. And I think that that just became a surprise when, when the audience actually saw the film. Because the Muni character here, James Allen is his name, is basically an innocent man and a man with great talents and skills who finds himself really innocently put on a chain gang. It is still rather frightening to see the world that's in Fugitive, that here we find men who are chained together, men who work at hard labor. There is just no relief. And so audiences going to a movie, maybe expecting to see Paul Muni as, as, as the outlaw, saw him instead as this basically innocent man in a, in a system over which he really has no control whatsoever. And most people didn't know about the chain gangs. And that's the other thing. Uh, unless uh, you know, a friend or a relative saw a fugitive and told you to go see it, there was a good chance, as you say, you were going in expecting Paul Muni to be in a gangster movie. It's got fugitive right there in the title, suggests a guy on the run, but it turns out to be something else. And uh, which increases the possibility of a movie really uh, uh, leading to societal, at least awareness and maybe change. Uh, that's so much harder now. This movie did raise awareness about the conditions in chain gangs uh, across the American South. Very much so. It's a frightening world. And I think that with, with the film, for audiences seeing it, the impact was that basically the, the, the fugitive, um, he's not a fugitive. He's an innocent. He has no choice but to get away from this world that is um, so cruel and that um, just limits him in, in so many ways. And I think that the audience um, at that time to see it and to learn about the chain gangs, to see how they operated, I think that the audience was just roused to, to feel that something's gotta be done about this. And there was so much discussion about it and, and the chain gangs in the South, and this is based on a true story by Robert Elliott Burns. These were experiences he had endured on a Georgia chain gang. So there was that as well. And eventually it did change it. Eventually um, there were, uh, the chain gangs were, were, were outlawed and um, a new kind of system came in. You know, there, there's also something else, Ben, that I, I find interesting about this film, which Mervyn Leroy did. And that is an, an actuality there were a disproportionate number of blacks on the chain gangs. And we see in here, there is a sequence when we see the black prisoners sitting ready to go out on a work detail and their faces are forlorn and there's a hopelessness there. And then there's also a sequence where we see a board with a number of men who will go out and work. And again, there are far more Negroes listed to do the work tale than, than the whites. So this also is coming into it and gives the audience uh, something to think about, even though that part of the film is not elaborated on. But you know, the NAACP did pay attention to this film and later they did help um, to defend a black man who had escaped 
from a chain gang. And there was another, the International Labor Defense, um, pledged to help uh, those who had escaped from the chain gangs. So it just was a real awakening. And, and even today, we, we, we feel that way. I've seen this film a number of times, but each time I'm so, sort of horrified by it. So it's, it's really a startling film. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, the ending, uh, very powerful, very very memorable. Uh, we'll talk more about it uh, uh, after the film, including the uh, 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 more details on, on the true story, which is as riveting as the film you're about to see. Uh, uh, Donald, thanks very much. Thank you, Ben. Here it is from Warner Brothers in 1932, Paul Muni in I'm a Fugitive from a Chain Gang. Welcome back. I'm Ben Mankiewicz, joined once again by film historian Donald Vogel. Donald, always good to see you. Good to see you, Ben, a good friend. Yes, indeed. So we just saw uh, I'm a Fugitive from a Chain Gang uh, uh, from 1932. It's based on uh, Robert Elliott Burns's story. It became a book. Originally, uh, these were serialized articles that were published. He did escape from a chain gang, and he started a new life in Chicago, but not as an engineer. He became a magazine editor and published his own pieces that had this impact that eventually became a book. And then in the in the surrounding hoopla around the publication of the articles, he was arrested again and sent back to the chain gang. Yes. Ultimately, there was a story that he met the governor of Georgia. And this was in the 40s and that they had a conversation and that he then got a pardon. But yeah. it, it, it followed him um, for, for such a long time. But he was determined to speak out much like the character in, in the movie at some point. That, that's something that is surprising in the, in the film when the character James Allen wants people to know the horrors of the chain gang. A certain aspect of this film that, you know, when we talk about these films that change a culture, um, I, I think that the, the aspect that can't be overlooked about this film, as grim as it is, it's still an entertaining film. And it's, it's a film that has other aspects of mainstream movies that an audience can connect to in, in, in the midst of this brutal world. There is the, the marriage that the character has to Glenda Farrell, who I happen to like. I don't like the way the, her character is depicted here. But nonetheless, that this romantic element and betrayal, and then there's another woman who you've referred to, Ben, um, sort of his, his, his true love. So these aspects in the, these movies that, that change our culture, they're, they're not documentaries, they are, are narrative films, and, and they do have these other aspects that an audience, in some cases, may go to see thinking that that's basically what they're going to get. And then they get this other thing that just opens their eyes. And, and you know, Ben, there, there's another aspect, you know, when I was talking about with the, with the black men on the chain gang, it, it's interesting that when he makes that first escape, it is this muscular black prisoner, Sebastian, who is going to hammer at those shackles and it, it's going to enable him to get away later on. It's interesting, this crossing of, of racial lines in the film that he doesn't he hesitate to help uh, Paul Muni's character. By the way, this is just um, a, another aspect. Um, the character, this black character, Sebastian, is played by Everett Brown, who played Big Sam in Gone with the Wind. The movie had a kind of uh, a, a lasting effect on, um, on our feelings and ideas about the prison system and about a certain kind of um, cruel and um, unjust uh, punishment. Donald, uh, as always, uh, great information, great conversation. Thanks very much. Thank you, Ben. Stick around. Donald and I return with uh, one more movie tonight from 1934. This is the first version of Imitation of Life with Claudette Colbert and Louise Beavers. It's next on TCM.